Welcome to this tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at network analysis and in particular the crashing of a network. So let's consider the following scenario. A community centre is to be built on a new housing estate. Nine activities have to be identified for this building project. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine activities. <clears throat> the activity network shown below shows the activities and their completion times in weeks. The first task is to determine the minimum time in weeks to complete this project. In order to do this we'll do a forward scan. So we're going to start at a time of zero and look through each activity. So starting at zero, it takes four weeks to complete activity A. So the earliest time we can finish and activity D can start is four weeks. Starting at zero, activity B takes four weeks as well. Now at the end of activity A, activity D takes 1, so the 4 plus 1 will give me 5 weeks. At the end of activity B, after 4 weeks, activity C takes 3, so 4 plus 3 gives me 7 weeks. And then the 7 plus activity F is 4, so 7 plus 4 gives me 11. You notice there's one option and two options going into this node, but so we won't just put 11 weeks in the square, we need to consider what do we get when we add in activity E at the end of activity B first. So B took four weeks, E takes a further four, that will give me eight weeks. Now when we've got two activities going to the one node, on a forward scan we always use the larger of the two. If we put an eight in here, it means we can start H before we've actually finished C and F. So we've got to consider all the tasks, all the activities must be completed by the time we now start activity H. So it will take eight weeks to do B and E and it will take 11 weeks to do B, C and F so we have to put in the 11. On a forward scan we take the larger number. Let's continue 11 plus 2 weeks for activity H gives me 13 but again we've got two options going here so 5 weeks to get activity A and D completed and a further 3 to get activity G it takes me 8 weeks. Again we've got two competing numbers going into this one particular node and we take the larger of the value 13. Finally, we look at our last step here, which is activity I, which takes a further six weeks. Excuse me. So six plus 13 gives me a total time of 19 weeks. So our forward scan starting at zero means it will take 19 weeks for everything in this particular project network to be completed. So the minimum time to complete this project is 19 weeks. We cannot get it done in any shorter time. Otherwise, something in these activities will not be completed. Task 2, let's determine the critical path for this project. Now, in order to do this, we need to do complete a backward scan. So starting at 19, which was our, our minimum time, working backwards, 19 take 6 gives me 13. 13 take 2 gives me 11. 13 take 3 gives me 10. 11 take 4 gives me 7. 10 take 1 gives me 9. 7 take 3 gives me 4. 11 take 4 gives me 7. So there's two options coming back to this particular node. Activity E, which reduces our time to 7, and Activity C, which reduces our time to 4. We've got two competing times. When we're moving in a forward scan, we took the larger of the two values. Now we're working on a backward scan, it's the reverse. We take the lower of the two values, so 4 goes in. Let's continue. 4 take 4 is 0, and 9 take 4 is 5. We take the lower of the two competing, and that goes in as 0. Now let's look at the critical path. Critical paths are values that have exactly the starting and finishing time on each one of their nodes. So here we start at zero. At the end of activity B, the earliest we can finish it is four, and the latest we can finish is four. There's no float or slack time in here. Then four down to seven takes us three. The earliest we can finish is three, and the latest we can finish is sorry, the earliest we can finish is seven. The latest we can finish is seven. Take 4 gives me an earliest completion time of 11 and the latest completion time of 11. Note this one here, whilst it's between two nodes of 4, 4 and 11, 11, if we start at 4 and it only takes 4 weeks to get it completed, that means we finished at 8. There's actually 3 more weeks before we get to the 11, so this is not part of the critical path because there is a float in that particular activity E. So 11 plus 2 gives me 13, earliest of 13, latest of 13, and then another 6. Latest, earliest of 19, latest of 19. So our critical path is B, C, F, H, and I. 
let's now determine the float times for the non-critical activities. So A here, these are the ones that are not on the critical path. So A has an earlier starting time of 0 and a latest finishing time of 9. So that means we've got 0 to 9, 9 weeks available. Activity A takes 4, so if I take 4 away from 9, that gives me 5. 5 float weeks or 5 lag weeks. I mean, somewhere in here we could stop 5 weeks and still get it completed by the latest finishing time. Activity D, earliest starting time is 4 on the left hand side. Latest completion time is 10. That means I've got 6 weeks, 4 take 10 is 6. Only requires 1 week. So I take away from the available time of 6 from the 1 for the activity, I'm left with 5 for floats. Again, there's 5 weeks in here of slack. We could do anything we like for 5 weeks and still get it completed in the necessity of 10 at the latest finishing time. E, earliest starting time of 4, latest finishing time of 11 means I've got seven weeks to get this job done. I only require four, so there's a float of three. And finally, earlier starting time of five for G, latest finishing time of 13, tells me I've got eight weeks available. I only need three, so that gives me a float of five. Now, the builders of the community center are able to speed up the project. Some of the activities can be reduced in time at an additional cost. So the activities that can be reduced are A, C, F, E and G. So which of these activities, if reduced in time individually, would not result in an early completion of the project? So would not result. So again, we can look at reducing A, C, E, F and G. Only those that are not on the critical path would result, would not result rather, in an early completion. So of those A, C, E, F and G, A is not on the critical path, E is not on the critical path, and G is not in the critical path, so we can make them smaller and that won't reduce the overall time of 19 because reducing nothing on the critical path. The owner of the state is prepared to pay the additional cost to achieve early completion. The cost to reduce the time of each activity is $5,000 per week. The maximum reduction time for each one of the five activities, A, C, E, F and G, is two weeks. The task five is to determine the maximum time in weeks for the project to complete, be completed now that certain activities can be reduced in time. So A, C, E, F and G can be reduced by two weeks. So first of all, let's reduce something on the critical path, C and F. So C was three, let's maximize the two week reduction to one. F was four, let's maximize that reduction down to two. Reduce both of them by two weeks. When we do this, we create a new critical path. If we follow this through, zero plus four is four, four plus one is five, five plus two is seven if we go along our old critical path. However, 0 plus 4 is 4, plus 4 is 8. We've now got a comparison between these two incoming activities to the node, and we fall vertex, and we find that 4 plus 4 is 8 is now the new higher value, so it now becomes part of the critical path. So 8 plus 2 is 10, and 10 plus 6 is 16. And of course, we can do our backward scans, as we've done in red. But now, we've reduced the critical path to 16 by cutting back C by two weeks and F by two weeks. A new critical path is B, E, H, and I. However, E here, we can still reduce that by a further one week. We had from B to C to F a value of seven weeks. When we reduce E, activity E, by down to a value of three, by reducing it by one week, it takes four to get B completed. A further three creates seven. So we've now dropped this to an equal seven with this particular path F, and path E. So effectively we've created two new critical paths. B, E, H and I is one path with a completion time of 15 weeks and B, C, F, H and I is the other at 15 weeks. Now we could have reduced this by 2 which would drop this down to 2 but that would mean this value here would become 6 and it would be no longer on the critical path so it's not of any value to reduce E by 2 because it is no longer contributing to reducing the final end result. Now finally, determine the minimum time in weeks for the project to be completed that now certain activities can be reduced in time. Again, just completing this by reducing the activity CNF by two weeks and activity E by one week, the new minimum project time completion is 15 weeks. Sorry, this is the final question. Determine the amount of cost of completing the project in this reduced time. So we reduced five week reduction, two for C, two for F, which gives us four weeks and one for E. Each 
at a week's cost of five thousand dollars for each reduction of week. So five lots of five thousand gives me a total cost of twenty five thousand to reduce this project down to fifteen weeks. Look, I hope this gives you some context of crashing and how you have to consider the changes in critical path and the most efficient way of using funds to in fact crash a project at the minimum cost. I hope this helps. I encourage you to keep working, practice your examples, and as always, thanks for watching.